Have you ever questioned what it truly means to be good or bad? Do these labels define us or do they limit us? Our society has an uncanny habit of neatly dividing actions, behaviors, and people into two tidy boxes labeled good and bad. It's a binary framework, a black and white perspective that often simplifies the complexities of human nature. But what if I told you that these concepts might not be as cut and dried as we think? What if good and bad are more fluid, more subjective than we've been led to believe? Imagine a world where actions are not inherently good or bad, but are dependent on context, intent, and perspective. This is not a radical new theory, but a concept deeply rooted in Zen philosophy. Today we delve into the story of Zen Master Hakuin, whose life embodies the Zen philosophy of transcending these labels. Zen Master Hakuin, a prominent figure in Japanese Zen Buddhism, was known for his teachings that often challenged conventional notions of good and bad. His life was not without controversy, and one such event stands as a testament to his unflinching embrace of Zen principles. In a small Japanese village, Hakuin was highly respected for his wisdom and spirituality. But as is often the case, even the most revered are not immune to scandal. One day, a baby was left at the steps of Hakuin's temple. The child was said to be the illegitimate offspring of a young woman from the village who claimed that Hakuin was the father. Now this was a serious accusation. It threatened not only Hakuin's reputation, but also the integrity of his spiritual teachings. In a society where honor was paramount, such a scandal could have led to disgrace and exile. But Hakuin, faced with the wailing infant and the accusatory eyes of his villagers, simply looked at the child and said, Is that so? Without a word of protest or defense, Hakuin took the child into his care. He accepted the responsibility, the shame, and the disruption to his peaceful life. He took on the role of a father, tending to the baby's needs, all the while continuing his spiritual practices and teachings. Imagine the whispers, the pointed fingers, the questioning of his character. Yet, through it all, Hakuin remained undeterred. His tranquility was like the stillness of a lake, unaffected by the pebbles of judgment thrown at it. To the repeated accusations and inquiries, his response remained the same. Is that so? Months passed, and then came a twist in the tale. The young woman confessed. Overwhelmed by guilt, she admitted that Hakuin was not the father of the child. The real father was a young man who worked in the fish market. The villagers, who had so readily believed in Hakuin's guilt, were now equally quick to offer their apologies. They came to take the baby back, expecting Hakuin to be relieved, to express his vindication, or perhaps to berate them for their hasty judgment. But Hakuin, holding the child he had cared for as his own, simply gave the baby to the villagers, his face calm, his demeanor unchanged, and to the apologies, the regrets, and the expressions of shame from his accusers, he had but one response. Is that so? Hakuin's response to the situation simply saying, is that so? left many bewildered. But there is profound wisdom in these words. They encapsulate the Zen philosophy of accepting life as it comes, without judgment or resistance, and show us that sometimes, in the face of adversity, the most powerful response is not to defend, but to accept and move forward. Hakuin's reaction to the accusation and his subsequent actions provide a deeper understanding of his teachings. When faced with a scandal that could have potentially destroyed his reputation, Hakuin responded with a simple, is that so? This response, devoid of any defense or denial, is a profound reflection of his Zen teachings of non-attachment and acceptance. Hakuin's reaction was not an act of apathy, but rather a demonstration of his ability to accept what was, without judgment or resistance. He didn't allow himself to be swayed by the societal labels of good or bad. Instead, he embraced the situation as it was, a testament to the Zen principle of living in the present moment. It would have been easy for Hakuin to become embroiled in the negativity of the situation. He could have lashed out in anger, defended his innocence, or crumbled under the weight of the unjust accusation. Yet, he chose not to. He chose to stay connected to his true self, undeterred by the external chaos. His acceptance of the child, despite being falsely accused, was not a sign of resignation, 
but a manifestation of his inner peace and compassion. He cared for the child with the same dedication and love as he would for his own, embodying the Zen teaching of treating every being with kindness and respect. The wisdom of Hakuin lies not only in his teachings but also in his actions. He lived his truth, embodying the principles of Zen Buddhism in every aspect of his life. His response to the scandal was not a calculated move to preserve his image or reputation. It was an expression of his understanding and acceptance of the impermanence of life, the futility of clinging to societal labels, and the importance of maintaining inner peace amidst external turmoil. Through this, Hakuin teaches us that our true nature is not defined by external circumstances or societal labels, but by our own inner peace and acceptance. In the face of adversity, Hakuin remained true to himself and his teachings, providing a timeless lesson in acceptance, non-attachment, and inner peace. So how can we apply Hakuin's teachings in our daily lives? Let's start with understanding the essence of non-attachment. It doesn't mean being indifferent or unfeeling. Instead, it's about not clinging to outcomes, people, or possessions. Imagine you're a leaf floating on a river. You don't resist the current. You don't try to swim upstream. You simply let go and allow the river to carry you where it will. In our daily lives, this could mean accepting that we can't control everything. It might be as simple as not getting upset when our commute is delayed or as profound as accepting the end of a relationship. By not attaching ourselves to specific outcomes, we allow life to unfold organically, reducing stress and increasing our capacity for joy. Now how about acceptance? Acceptance is a close cousin to non-attachment. It's about embracing reality as it is, not as we wish it to be. This might mean accepting that we're not perfect, or that we can't please everyone. It might mean accepting that we can't change the past, or predict the future. By accepting reality, we free ourselves from the burden of impossible expectations, and open ourselves to the beauty of the present moment. And what about transcending societal labels? How can we apply this to our lives? Well, just as Hakuin didn't allow himself to be defined by the judgments of others, neither should we. Whether society labels us as successful or unsuccessful, good or bad, we should remember that these are just labels. They don't define us. We are not our jobs, our bank accounts, or our mistakes. We are complex, unique individuals, and our value lies in our authenticity, not in societal labels. By incorporating these teachings into our daily lives, we can find a sense of inner peace and freedom. We can navigate the ups and downs of life with grace and equanimity, understanding that everything is transient and that the only constant is change. Remember, as Zen master Hakuin showed us, life is neither good nor bad, it simply is.